Cartoons, for the most part, can be a family-friendly affair. A fun time for everyone. The wacky, bubbly, and comedic nature of it brings about the most wholesome moments that one could ask for. But there sometimes comes a show, an episode, a moment that arrives and takes a much more mature and darker approach. It pushes the boundaries as to what is considered kid-friendly and attacks topics that are not only too mature for children to see nowadays, but too serious for even modern cartoons to address. And I think this particular episode in Teen Titans represents that. This episode in Teen Titans for me is one I've never forgotten when I witnessed it for the first time. And it's one I absolutely want to discuss in this video. And it's a moment that I think made Teen Titans not suitable for work. And what I mean by not suitable for work, I mean just the premise behind the episode is just not appropriate for a general audience to see. So I guess this is your one and only warning now. The episode is the third one in season four named Birthmark. Now I'm just gonna skip to the meat and potatoes of the episode while also doing some paraphrasing. Essentially, Slade emerges from the underworld after supposedly being killed by Terra in a previous episode while also being given the ability to firebend? Also in this episode, it is Raven's birthday in which the Titans throw her a surprise birthday party. She is clearly not in the mood to celebrate and tells Robin that if they knew what her birthday entailed, it would not be something to celebrate. The need will be fulfilled. This quote will be important for later. Robin emerges to console Raven, but before anything can be explained, they get a distress call at a factory. On arrival, the Titans encounter Slade, and his sole mission in this episode is to relay a message to Raven and Raven only. I mean, immediately he is on the attack after her, so much so that he throws a jet of fire directly at her, almost disregarding the other Titans. Speaking of the Titans, as for the rest of them, Slade handles all of them with ease, to the point where they all just seem like a distraction. Slade moves in on Raven, grabs her arm, and burns the same symbol on her that was seen in her room while also tearing a bit of her outfit. Right then, he tells her, It has begun. After this happens, Slade begins to destroy the factory, putting most of the other Titans in danger as they try to escape. In a burst of anger, Raven emphatically shouts, Stop! Which somehow pauses time and freezes everything and everyone in sight. Except Slade. He begins to move in on her again, and she is forced to flee, but not without bringing Robin with her first. I just want to say, in this one scene alone, Slade not only proved himself to be an unstoppable monster, but also an unrelenting force that stopped at nothing to accomplish what he was set out to do. And this scene alone could have suggested that he possibly wasn't human. Moving forward, Slade continues his pursuit of Raven, but is cut off by Robin who tries to buy time by defending her while she escapes. And if you thought Slade was not human before, Robin's attacks prove to be fruitless as Slade easily recovers from it and disposes of him with no problem. Just like the Terminator, Slade emerges from the flames and once again continues his pursuit of Raven. No matter what she does, it's no use as Slade thwarts all of her attacks with ease. Slade then teleports behind Raven, grabs a hold of her and places even more symbols on her while also tearing even more of her clothing off. Things are starting to get really hairy here. Raven and Robin take refuge inside a cathedral where she reveals some very vague information in my opinion. I need to tell you, when I was born, they looked into my future. On this day, the anniversary of my birth, something is supposed to happen. Something very bad. That's why I didn't want to celebrate. But just because you don't have a party doesn't mean it's not your birthday. Before more could be said, Slade breaks into the cathedral to once again hunt down Raven, and she flees once more. Slade eventually tackles Raven on top of a skyscraper, and things here truly take a turn for the worst. Slade rips off Raven's cloak and not only reveals more symbols on her back, 
but also exposes more of her body. Slade then says the following. What you have concealed, you shall become. You have no other choice. The message will be delivered. Your destiny shall be fulfilled. The words that Slade had said were the same words that were told to her in her room when it caught a blaze. What, what you have you concealed, have you shall become. You shall become. You, you have, have no, no other, other choice. choice. The Your destiny, destiny shall will be fulfilled. Be and now it's all starting to make sense. Raven tries to fight back, but Slade overpowers her, and her clothes for a final time tears away, and she essentially is stripped down to nothing but her undergarments. The same symbol that appeared in her room and Slade's forehead now appear on hers. Her hair begins to grow rapidly as well. All over her body, from her arms, her legs, and her back, reveals more symbols, and the day starts to change to night. What once used to be Jump City now was turned to a volcanic wasteland. Where Titan Tower used to be surrounded by water is now almost fully submerged in lava. The rest of the Titans as well seem to have been turned to stone, suggesting their demise. It is then finally revealed that Raven's birthday actually marks the end of the world. It marks the apocalypse. Raven looks on in disbelief, but Slade grabs her and assures her that this is her future. The prophecy that she is supposed to fulfill. Raven will destroy the world. <laughs> However, still holding her close is Slade. Raven appears to be exhausted from using all of her power to undo the vision, and Slade says the following. We'll be in touch. Oh, and a happy birthday. Robin catches her with a smile on his face, assuring her that it is finally over. Back at the tower, Raven returns to her normal look and sees that there are arrows outside of her room that lead down the hallway. The Titans throw her another surprise birthday that same night. Raven once again looks disturbed, but then replies with, we're going to need ice cream. <laughs> Coming right up. I'll cut the cake. And I shall fetch the Throcknar. Robin tells her that they will find Slade and figure out why he was after her. Raven looks at her hands and sees more symbols appear on them as we just scratch the surface to what her future entails. And that's how the episode ends. Well, actually, it ends with Slade going back to the cave he emerged from and communicates with who I assume to be Trigon via the same symbol that was shown all throughout the episode, which implies that they're due to make another return for a much more grander scheme. Now, listen, there's a lot of speculation as to what this episode was about and what it represented, but I want to talk to you about the possible topic that it may have been trying to address. The topic that's being addressed here, if it wasn't obvious enough with how some of the scenes went, in my honest opinion, addresses, okay, now for the sake of not having YouTube Task Force 1 for 1 come and age restrict my video or anything like that, I'm going to refer to the topic that they are addressing here as hypersexual assault rifle, or simply refer to as SA if you want to be simple, if you don't, you know, if you want to be boring, but you catch my fancy. I truly do believe that Teen Titans was addressing S.A. via Raven's story arc for season four, as well as some possible, you know, blatant sexual undertones of her. When I go back and rewatch the scenes where Slade is pursuing Raven relentlessly, how every time he gets to her, her clothes rip and exposes more of her body, how he holds her tight and talks to her from behind, I, I can't help but feel like I was witnessing a a crime being done to Raven. I felt helpless at times watching what was a fully fledged assault on her. This scene I remember seeing in particular because it just felt so wrong to look at. Seeing Raven being grabbed from behind like she was Slade's property, you almost couldn't look away from what was transpiring. Some out there even saw this scene as their first encounter with sexual content. And it could just be me, but not only was Slade practically invincible in this episode, but how he talked to Raven with his tone of voice, 
he sounded extremely seductive. Which I think adds to the sexual undertones that Teen Titans may have been going for. But I don't know. Seeing Raven just be at the mercy of Slade's grasp under the moonlight, I could be overthinking, but this felt like some twisted love story of sorts. Almost like she finally gave in to Slade's influence. On top of that, both of them having the same symbol on their foreheads made it seem like they were intrinsically connected and made for each other. Like I'm sitting here thinking, like, wh like what am I watching? Is this Teen Wolf or Twilight or something? Fifty Shades of Grey? I guess in this case, it'd be like Fifty Shades of Purple or, or Fifty Shades of Slade. I don't know. You might be like, Murray, I think you may be overreaching with your perspective here. Well, according to Reddit, I'm not the only one who feels this way. There are a couple Teen Titans Reddit posts out there that are related to the very ideas that I feel are presented. Some discussions like Raven feels sexualized for fan service and Slade is an OP villain. Now going back to my earlier point, another user even said that this episode was a sexual awakening for them. Now take what you will with that statement, but if you were a teen with raging hormones and you saw someone like Raven having her clothes ripped in the fashion that it was, with her exposed body and long hair, I mean, it wouldn't do anybody justice, especially if you were crushing on her. With how this whole episode went, honestly, I question how this show passed the PG rating. It should have at least gotten a PG-13 rating. And I will say Teen Titans as a whole is a much more mature show. It tacks other topics that may not be suitable for, you know, general audience to watch. So it's not like this one episode, I would say, is what should have given it a mature rating. But but this definitely is up until this point, it's most mature topic and content that it addressed. But clearly this encounter between Slade and Raven struck a chord with a lot of people with how much fan art cosplay was made with Raven in her birthmark form. I mean, it's a very drastic change for her as far as aesthetics. You know, past the sexual undertones, it does look kind of cool. You know, she does, you know, she almost looks like she's in her, I guess you could say, unhinged form. It's like she's almost in her nine tails fox form in a sense. You know, people really do like this version of Raven. And people even like this version of Slade. And I mean, he's unstoppable in this. In addition to that, there's even a, <laughs> let's just say there's even a fan made adaptation of a particular scene in the episode that I definitely didn't watch when I was about 10. Stop the cap. <laughs> but for as dark as the episode was, Number one, I thought it was really good story progression for someone like Raven. Yes, there were little glimpses here and there in previous episodes as to what she was, but this episode really captured the tragedy and despair that is integral to Raven's story. And the reason why I say tragedy and despair is integral to Raven's story is because if you know anything about Raven's backstory, not jumping too deep into it, but according to the DC fandom here. Raven was born the half-breed daughter of a human mother named Angela Roth and the demon overlord Emperor Trigon, who of course is her father. She was conceived when her mother ran away from home and joined a cult, which then summoned the demon lord Trigon, who graped her. Which is also another topic that Teen Titans could have been addressing, but I think they addressed S.A. more. I think it had more of a presence here more than with this. Angela Roth, going by Arella, where Raven was born and raised in the pacifistic reality called Azerath. Raven was taught to control her emotions by the Azar and the Azerathian monks in order to suppress and control her inherited demonic powers. And clearly in this episode, you can see how her emotions get the best of her and they kind of get out of control. And you see how her powers is able to affect everyone around her, especially with how she was able to stop time. Now this version of Raven's origin story actually comes from the New Earth comics, but it is very much similar to how her story is told in Teen Titans. The only thing that's left out, of course, for obvious reasons, is that she was conceived through Grape from Trigon. So the stories still very much are parallel. But enough about her origin story there, but you can clearly see how when you talk about Raven and you really want to dive into her story arc, you do kind of got to mention these dark sexual topics that is almost synonymous with her and moving on with number two what teen titans attempted to bring to the table as far as its more sensitive topics is something that modern cartoons wouldn't even dare to explore they wouldn't even dare look its way 
Now, am I saying cartoons need to start taking risks and addressing things like hypersexual assault rifle or grape? No, but I think when cartoons look to appeal to an older audience, they have a chance to address serious topics that make sense for the character's story arc. But to say Teen Titans Go is more kid friendly while having butt cheeks clap and shake 24 seven and innuendos of masturbation come about, I'd rather take the previous adaptation than this. And Raven isn't the only one who had to struggle with her inner demons. Robin had to deal with proving himself worthy of leading the Titans, constantly butting heads with other members as far as who led. Being a sidekick of Batman made him feel like he was constantly overshadowed and never got the credit he deserved. Also, he dealt with hatred and vengeance towards Slade, constantly trying to single-handedly defeat him, only to be several steps behind. He even hid secrets from his own teammates just to take down Slade. And of course, all the other Titans dealt with their internal battles as well. Which I think in this episode, actually, in a way, is a nice touch, being that Raven and Robin really partnered up in this episode both of them dealt with hatred towards somebody robin of course dealing with hatred towards slade and raven dealing with hatred towards her father so i think in more ways than not they have a lot in common but i think for raven her internal battle was one that had life ending consequences that made things feel important she literally was stripped down for all to see what she was made of all in all this episode was one that i never quite understood when i first watched it and i felt so many emotions that I couldn't comprehend at the time. But this episode absolutely showed me just how serious the show was willing to go with its darker tones, and 100% showed me just how sinister Slade could be. This truly was the moment that Teen Titans became not suitable for work. But I think it's one of the many moments that made the show memorable. But that's my interpretation of the episode. I mean, do you remember watching this episode as a kid? If so, what are your thoughts on it? I love to know down below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video and don't hate, motivate and God bless.